Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Nurse Eunice and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to perform a manual blood pressure and I have my wonderful assistant Anija. She's going to be in a couple of our videos. So uh, one of the first things you want to do is of course hand hygiene. You want to perform that first. So over here I do have hand sanitizer on our station. We also have our blood pressure cuff which is also called a sphygmomanometer and then we have our stethoscope. If you're going to be using your equipment for multiple patients, you want to also ensure that you have alcohol swabs so that you can be cleaning the earpieces and the diaphragm of your stethoscope before you use it on a different patient. And if you're using your blood pressure cuff on multiple patients, you want to make sure you also have wipes so that you can be cleaning your equipment and sanitizing it. We don't want you putting dirty equipment back in your and care. One thing I always like to do is to ask, um, is it okay if I take the blood pressure on a particular arm? So, Anaja, can I use your left arm? Yes. Oh, awesome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to place the blood pressure cuff or the speed momentometer. I do have another video in which I'll be showing you how to read the device. So if you've never read a blood pressure cuff before or a speed momentometer, just check in the description area for a separate video link. All right, so prior to placing the cuff, we actually have Anija's arm on, an, um, on a flat surface. And so she's sitting upright. We have her arm at the level of the heart. We're going to go ahead and bring the sleeve up. When you're applying your cuff, it has artery indicators. It has arrows on the actual cuff. And what the arrows indicate, I'm going to have your palm up for me, is this is left arm and it's pointing to the brachial artery. And so whenever you all are in nursing school and you're in your programs and you don't place your stethoscope properly, I know because number one, there's an artery indicator which lets me know that the brachial artery is going to be on the inner aspect of the left arm and that's also the location or the place where you'd be putting your stethoscope. So knowing your positions of your brachial artery and remember if you can see it, it's not an artery. If you can see it, it's a vein. Whenever you're doing your cuff placement, you don't want the cuff too high. You don't want it too low. This is the antecubital area. Um, you want to make sure it's at least two finger breaths above the antecubital area so that you have enough room for your stethoscope. And then you're going to apply the cuff. Now, as far as your stethoscope is concerned, whenever you're placing the earpieces in your ear, you want to test your equipment. You're going to tap on the diaphragm of the stethoscope. This is the diaphragm, which is used for adults, and this is the veil that's usually used for pediatric patients. You want to tap on the diaphragm, and if it doesn't make you jump, chances are your stethoscope's not on. Some of your stethoscopes will turn. Ooh, you want to turn it until it's in the on position. And now we're going to place the diaphragm of the stethoscope on top of the brachial artery. And I'm just gonna reposition this a little bit so I can see it. Make sure your tubing is not hitting a stethoscope. So I'm gonna move this over. So now that we're ready to place our stethoscope, we're gonna place it on top of the brachial artery like so. When you're holding your stethoscope, try to keep your hands off of the tubing. Otherwise, you're gonna have additional background sounds. So we have the brachial artery here, all right? And so this is where we're going to place the stethoscope. Whenever you are going to be inflating your stethoscope, you have to turn your valve. And remember that righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. So if you want to tighten this up, you turn it towards the patient. If you want to release the air, you turn it away from the patient. All right, we're gonna inflate it to about 160. So here we go. You'll see the needle moving. Okay, so we're at 160. I'm gonna turn it slowly towards me. And you'll be making note of the first heart tone or cortical sound that you hear and also the last. The first heart tone would be known as the systolic and the last would be the diastolic. And I'm just going to repeat that again so that you understand it. We've located our brachial artery. We're going to place the stethoscope on top of the brachial artery. We're going to turn this away, making it tight. 
I'm going to inflate the cuff to 160. You go up to as high as 200, depending on the history of your patient. If they have a history of hypertension, you can go a little bit higher. You're gonna slowly deflate. And note where you hear your first quarter cuff sound and your last quarter cuff sound. I want you to keep practicing taking the manual blood pressure. And remember that practice makes perfect. If your patient has a history of hypertension, you will start your blood pressure cuff. You would go ahead and inflate it so that the needle is about 40 above their last known reading or their highest reading. For example, if the person's last systolic blood pressure is 160, it would be okay for you to inflate the cuff to 200. If you lose count, if you're not sure, let all the air out of the sphygmomanometer or the blood pressure cuff and start the process over again. We're usually only allowed two opportunities to take a blood pressure on each extremity. So if you attempt the blood pressure twice on the left arm and you're unsure of your reading, you would then have to go to the alternate arm. If you keep squeezing, if you keep applying pressure, there's gonna be less circulation. It's also gonna be increased pain, both of which would negatively impact the blood pressure reading. And so if you want to purchase your own blood pressure kit, I got this one off of Amazon for less than $25. If you're not a fan of the loud, bright colors, um, of course, they have blue, they have black, they have red, they have purple. So I'm going to have a link in the description area below. And in our next video, we'll be showing you how to take a radial pulse. Again, this is Nurse Eunice with Florida Training Academy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.